Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together on this Memorial Day weekend as we remember those who gave their lives for each and every one of us that we might have the freedom that we have, that we might have the opportunities in this country that we have. We thank the Lord for each and every one of them, and we ask the Lord to continue to watch over each and every family. We gather together as God's wonderful people as we continue to pray for one another, as we lift up one another, as we make that difference in one another's lives. We reach out to the community around about us to make a difference in the lives of those that are hurting. We gather together as God's wonderful people to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that is above all names. At his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather to worship hymn number 64, Holy, Holy, Holy. to the Lord in prayer this morning. We continue to remember all those that are sick, those in the nursing home, those that are shut in. We ask the Lord to be with each and every one of them. Those that are bereaved, we ask the Lord to continue to touch them and be with them in a mighty way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace today, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege we have 
to worship you. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your concern that you have for each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, that you were willing to send your son Jesus Christ to this earth so that he might offer of himself as that perfect sacrifice so that we might be righteous before you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that mercy and that grace that makes it all possible to your son Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son Jesus who comes to give us hope for each day, to give us life and to give it to us abundantly and to give us that assurance of eternal life. And Heavenly Father, may your precious Holy Spirit that come and dwell in each and every one of our hearts. May your Spirit draw each and every one of us closer to one another that we might love one another as you have loved us. And Heavenly Father, may your spirit continue to guide each and every one of us in the days ahead that your will might be done. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are sick, those that are shut in, those in the nursing home, those that are bereaved. Lord, you know each and every one of them, and Lord, you know what they're going through. We just ask for your special touch to be with them. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every life that is gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. You know everything about us. You know our situation. And Lord, you know what we're going through. Lord, we just ask for that special touch today as you meet the needs of each and every one of us gathered here today. We always give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. We pray this morning as your children, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 368, My Hope is Built.
A softer reading is found on page 743. We're reading from Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouths of babes and infants. When I look at your heavens, the works of your fingers, What are human beings that you are mindful of them? And mortals that you care for them. You have made them little less than God. And crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet. All sheep and oxen. And also the beasts of the field. The birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the of announcements, we will begin Vacation Bible School next Sunday at, from 6 to 8.15 and supper will be provided and if you would like to volunteer, contact Lindsay. And we also will begin uh, today or next Sunday at, from the month of June and July collecting school supplies for the school and so uh, each and every year you've done well and we're looking forward to this year as we continue to make a difference for those children that don't have the money to be able to buy these products that they need for school. And so we appreciate all that you do as you continue to reach out to make that difference. This morning we're glad to have the Gideons with us. We have some from... Uh, the Pattersville uh, Easley Charge, and uh, we have some from the Golden Strip, and so we're glad to have them with us, and when the service is over, if you will stand at the back, we will uh, make a donation to the Gideons, and know that all of the money that you give goes for the Bibles, it doesn't go for them, uh, any of their expenses, they pay their own way, and so we're looking forward to uh, hearing the work of the, what the Gideons are doing. And Jim, if you'll come and... Eight souls saved in the darkness of a coal mine in Kentucky. Sharon was a young, young student in the eighth grade. She always heard her, her, her classmates talking about Jesus, but she didn't have a personal relationship about Jesus. But one day... There were some Gideons doing a distribution in the front of the school, giving out testaments just like this. And so Sharon walked outside, and the Gideon offered her one of the testaments. She said, yes, I'd like to know about Jesus. So he opened it up, and he showed it to her, that it had the help aids in the front, also at Psalms and Proverbs. Then in the back is the most important part, is the guide, the GPS to Jesus Christ. He walked her through the plan of salvation, and there Sharon accepted Jesus Christ on the street in front of her, her school. She was so happy that she had gotten a new book, but most of all, she had gotten a new friend, a Savior, Jesus Christ. She goes home excited and tells her mother, said, Mother, Mother, look at my new book. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. I'm saved. And so she sits down and she shows her mother the testament, just like the Gideon showed her. There she also accepted Jesus Christ. But then the father comes home, the coal miner. He comes in and he's had a hard day. Just all he wants is his beer. But she woes over and said, Daddy, Daddy, look at my new book. I got a new book, a new Bible. 
about Jesus. We don't need any books like this. We don't need any Bibles in this house. And he throws it up against the wall. She's sad and she leaves out. But in just a short period of time, he's drank his beer and he's passed out. Face over the table. But he's had laid his coal miner jacket on, on the back of the chair. So she goes in and picks up the little testament that's been thrown against the wall and places it in his coal miner's p- pocket, hoping that at work or sometime he'll take time maybe just to look at the little book that she had received. Later that day, next morning, she went to school. The dad went to, went to the mine. The mother stayed at home. But during the school, Sharon and all the other students heard the sirens going off. There was a, a coal mine cave in. So she goes home from school. There's the coal miner trucks there in, at her house to tell her that her dad, along with seven other people, were tracked like a quarter of a mile down in the dark bellies of that coal mine and only had about eight hours of oxygen to, to survive. And they didn't know if they would be able to get to him in time. They prayed about it. They talked about it. Then they went to school the next day. But then when she came home, the the trucks were were back there again. Her dad and the seven other miners had expired. They were found. They were dead. They were given the personal belongings of the miners that were in the the coal mine. And so they they were giving them Sharon's dad's. And he had the testament that she had placed in his coal pocket. It had coal dust on it. It was dirty. And they, she, she was looking at it, and, and she was sad, sad. Then my dad, I wish he'd have known Jesus. But then to the glory of God, she turns to the back of the Testament, and there's a place for the plan of salvation. And there's not only her dad's name, but seven other men's names there that Through the word of God, through the light of Jesus Christ, as dark as that hole was, they accepted Jesus Christ. She was so happy that Gideon had given her a testament and that she, her mom, and her dad had accepted Jesus Christ. Greetings from Gideon's International. We are are members of the local evangelical Protestant churches. We're laymen of the churches. We're, uh, that's the, the uh, have to be born again believer in Jesus Christ. That's the Christian requirement. The professional requirements is that you're in the professional field. You're a business owner, a manager, insurance salesman, farmer, uh, programmer, doctor, lawyer, dealing with avenues of different lives of people in, in the business field. And so we're, that's who we are. And I come to you today from Gideon's International asking Several things. First is prayer. Prayer is most important. I ask for your prayers for the Gideons as we pray for you especially. Golden Strip Camp prays for every pastor, every church, just as my camp does in Pattersville every Saturday morning. Also, we ask for membership in this church here. Anyone that that meets the the, uh, Christian and the professional uh, qualification, we'd love to speak to you about being a Gideon. And our wives come along beside us. They also give out testaments and witnessing. Our sole purpose is to provide the testaments throughout the world in every avenue of life and provide a witness where the ultimate goal will be salvation for any and everyone, every man, woman, boy, and girl. And we all, as a pastor, Max Mixon said, we ask for, for, for donation because it takes what you pay, I mean, what you give and what Gideon's. I give too. It takes both of what we pay together to meet the spiritual need for the testaments throughout, throughout the world in over 200 countries and over 110 languages that we have it in. And then we, we have a special gift for you. We have a brand new Gideon card display. Now, that Gideon card display is for recognition, memory of, for a special occasion. The cards are free. You take and fill it out to, for the card to go to someone. The Bibles cost $5. And this is like a hotel Bible. That's what you're purchasing right there. $5. Life expectancy is six years, but it will reach 2,300 souls within that lifetime of six years. The, uh, the 
we place them in the Bibles, and then we inspect them. We go back and inspect at least twice a year to make sure that the Bible is still there and also that it's in good condition. If it's damaged, torn in any way, we retrieve that Bible but the Bi and place a new one. But that old, torn Bible's life continues on because we remove the hard cover, put a soft cover on it, and it goes to jails and prisons. And you ask, what is the purpose? Is it really worth anything putting the Bible in a hotel? I want to share with you, this Bible came from a, ho a hotel, uh, Blythewood, down next to Columbia, your state capital. And this is what was put in the Bible. And you formulate your opinion to see if it's the same as mine, where a mother and children left their home to seek the solitude of a hotel. And they found God's Word. She says, turn to page 556. That's Psalms 35, where David is praying and pleading to God to protect him from Saul. Saul's out to kill him. Then she pours out her heart. She says, Lord, please protect us from all the evil around us. Lord, protect us. Help us, Lord. And she puts, out, puts her name. Shandy, uh, Sandy, Brandon, Micaiah, Kennedy, and Kenoda. Then she continues pouring out her heart with this whole page in the back here. She pours out, Father God, I ask you for peace in my heart. Father God, I beg you for the mercy. Father, I ask you to give Forgive me for, for the wrong I've done in the past and take away the evil that has come to break my family apart. Father God, please protect my kids for the law is failing us and is believing the devil. Oh God, help rebuke him. Me rebuke him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. She believed. This helped her. This gave her comfort. Just here at Dials, you have the opportunity to provide scriptures. Provide scriptures to not only give comfort, but ultimately to receive God's word for them to believe and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I pray God's blessings upon Dial, your ministry here. I pray that you continue to be a beacon here within the uh, Lawrence County. And I thank Pastor Mixon especially for letting us come and speak this morning. And your camp, which is a uh, Golden Strip camp, is still working because this week they, get, they made a distribution at Bronze Accor to Hillcrest School to all the graduates that would take a testament. God bless you, and God, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege we have to serve you and be a part of your great and wonderful kingdom. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what the Gideons do as they make a difference in the lives of those around about. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every gift that's been given this day. Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. Heavenly Father, bless those gifts that they might be used to make that difference. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for those that continue to give week after week. Heavenly Father, bless them a hundredfold. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
This morning from the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, beginning with verse 12. Therefore, brother, we have an obligation, but it's not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs. And we are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this scripture and the message that you have given unto me this day. As I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. May every word that flow from my lips be pleasing to you and Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, we ask for the anointing of every word that is spoken and every word that is received. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject this morning is God in three persons. There are a lot of things in this world that we don't understand. There's a lot of things that we will want to ask Jesus when we get to heaven, why certain things took place and why certain things happened. Today is Trinity Sunday, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's something that is difficult to understand. I've been preaching for over 40 years, and sometimes I wonder how it all comes together. But the Holy Spirit reaches out to us and guides us and brings Scripture to remembrance. And the Holy Spirit helps us to see our way through. In the very beginning, there was darkness and chaos all over the world. It was that darkness. And then the Spirit of God moved across the face of the earth. And God created. God created the heavens. And God created the earth. And he placed in the earth the bodies of water. And he placed the the land. 
And then he began to plant the seed on that land. The herbs, the flowers, the trees. And God took a look at all that he had created, all the beauty of the lakes and the rivers and the seas and all of the beautiful flowers. And God said, it is good. And God continued to create as the creator. And God would create the animals of all walks of life. And he would place them animals on earth to multiply and to bring forth more. And God would continue to create. And as he created, he would say, it's good. And God would create the sun and the moon and the stars. And the sun would be brighter than the moon, the moon and the day and the night was separated and God created. After God created everything and placed them all here on earth, God said it's good. And then the scripture says, God says, let us make man in our own image. You see, it comes from being singular, God created, to being let us create man in our own image, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as they created man in the image of God. And God created man. He created Adam and Eve. He made them a perfect human being. He gave them knowledge, but he also gave them free will to choose. And God would come down and he would walk with Adam and Eve in the garden. Early in the morning, they would have that time together as he would fellowship with that which he had created. But then the serpent came one day and he offered up choices to Adam and Eve. Did God tell you that you could eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden? God said we could eat of all the fruits in the, of the trees in the garden except the one in the midst of the garden. Satan says to them, "Do you eat, if you eat of the fruit, do you know that you'll be wise as God? You can be as wise as God if you just eat from that fruit. And Eve and Adam ate the fruit and sin came into the world. The original sin that we continue to deal with. Because each and every one of us have a sin nature. And that original sin is in each and every one of us. And we have to deal with that original sin every day. How would God deal with that original sin? Through the priest and the high priest, God dealt with it through the sacrificial system. And for years, that sacrificial system went on. On the Day of Atonement, that precious lamb, unblemished, perfect lamb, would be brought to the high priest. And the blood of that precious lamb would be placed on the altar. And your sins would be covered, but your sins would not be forgiven. All the people that lived in the Old Testament, their sins were never forgiven until Christ Jesus died on the cross at Calvary. Their sins were simply covered by the blood. And so God wanted his people to be reconciled to him. And so how would God reconcile his people to him if only the blood of the lamb 
would be offered up and would only be cover the sin. John the Baptist would say, Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. God chose his own son to come into the world and be born in a manger in Bethlehem. And his name would be called Emmanuel, which means God has come to be with us. So that you and I might know God, that we might know the love of God, we might know the compassion of God, we might know the forgiveness of God and the mercy of God. And Jesus Christ would begin his ministry He would come to the Jordan Valley and there he would be baptized by John the Baptist. And as Jesus came out of the water, the voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved son. In him I am well pleased. And the dove landed upon him. There was Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God as Jesus would begin his ministry. And the Spirit would lead Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days. And the Spirit would take care of him during those 40 days. And throughout his ministry, the Holy Spirit would go with him. The time came when Jesus would offer up himself as that perfect sacrifice. There at Caesarea Philippi, he took his disciples and said, what is the world saying about who I am? And who do you say that I am? And then he says, I must go to Jerusalem. I will suffer and I will die. And on the third day, I will rise again. The time came when Jesus would go to Jerusalem. And he would go to the cross. And there he would die on Calvary's cross and shed his blood. That our sins might be forgiven. That God could look on each and every one of us. And God would see no sin. God would see the righteousness of Christ through the shed blood. Now, your sins are not only covered, but now your sins are forgiven. Jesus Christ would walk with those disciples. He would teach those disciples. And just before he would go to the Father, he would say, I'm going to the Father. I'm going away. But where I'm going, you cannot go at this time. But I want you to know that I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will live in you. And the Holy Spirit will reveal unto you all things that I have shared with you, that the Father has shared with me while we've been in ministry together. You will never be alone. The Holy Spirit will always know your situation. And the Holy Spirit will never forsake you nor leave you. And the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in each and every one of our hearts. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when we tell the Lord that we are sorry for our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He gives us that Holy Spirit to come and live and dwell in our hearts. And that Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us in all the ways that God wants us to go. The Holy Spirit will never make you do anything, but the Holy Spirit will always be available. And the Holy Spirit will always remind you when we are headed in the wrong direction. But the Holy Spirit will be with us always. And so when we come to God in three persons, God was the creator. God created everything. He created man. But sin came into the world. 
And so he sent his son Jesus. And Jesus walked upon the face of the earth being fully human and fully divine. He was willing to offer of himself as that perfect sacrifice on Calvary's cross for each and every one of us. And then as Jesus prepared to go back to the Father, he would ascend into heaven and he would send the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost that those disciples might be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Today, we still have that same spirit. For he says we should not live in fear and we should not walk in the flesh for the flesh will surely die. But we walk in the spirit as he is in the spirit. We walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. For the shed blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. This morning, that spirit continues to live and dwell in us. That spirit will continue to be with us until the trump sounds. When the trump sounds, Christ will come and we will be lifted up and we will meet him in the sky. And we will spend all of eternity with him. But this was God's plan for each and every one of us. Through the creator, through Jesus, and the shed blood, and the Holy Spirit that comes to live and dwell in our hearts. Our closing hymn as we sing twice, hymn number 393, Spirit of the Living God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love towards each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. Through his shed blood on Calvary's cross, our sins are forgiven. We become your children and we become heirs and joint heirs. Everything on a thousand hills now belongs to us because the Spirit comes to live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts. Heavenly Father, help us to be born of that spirit that we might make a difference in this world around about us. Heavenly Father, draw us closer to you and closer to one another. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.